Right. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for coming to the Sashiko live streaming. This is Atsushi, and this is the live streaming where I stitch. I do the live. I do the Sashiko stitching while I talk about Sashiko. There's gonna be unedited, unfiltered view of Sashiko stitching, so I hope you can learn by watching it. At the same time, I want, I wanted to, I would like to make this place as the sort of place to be together. So please bring some of your own project stitching, crochet. Eating, anything is fine. Um, I hope you can bring and enjoy time together here. All right. Um, Sashiko live. Wait, 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 Sorry, like my I have a little headache today. It's really not the bad headache, but it's kind of heavy, like a fog in my brain. I don't think it's something that I have to be worried about. <clears throat> it's not a beer. It's just the pop. Anyway, so I will. I hope that I can talk about. I hope I can clear my head while I'm talking and stitching, but、um, today I will talk about the importance of the protecting the roots in the ordinary, which I have probably talked before, so it might be some repetition. But I hope you enjoy me talking, and then I will enjoy your comments. And I wanna, it it, it would be great if we can make a nice space here again.、Okay. All right, I will move my camera to the. Station, not a station. The table to stitch. All right, there we go. Hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> okay, where do we start? <laughs> Just a second. I forgot to check the. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. I just uploaded the very small slideshow-ish kind of video this afternoon. It is about Boro, and I've been trying to make that slide slash video for like last month or so. So <clears throat> it is something that I will try to keep doing. That more like the. Presentation ish, like more kind of how to deliver the message that I would like to、um, pass it on. So I hope that will be helpful for everybody to more people to acknowledge what the borrow is. Hello, welcome back.、But、yeah. Headache. Oh yes, I thank you. It's not that bad, I guess. If it's too bad, I will not probably. Well, I might come to the online actually though. Okay, perfect. Um, I really it really helped make the concept of borrow start to click for me. I think, yes. Um, that's kind of one biggest challenge I have in sharing Sashiko in English, even borrow in English. Some of the Japanese concept is based on the fact that we can read between lines. So I don't. I have never met anybody who asked me to explain what sashiko and boro is. Oh, the video is on the YouTube and the Instagram. I have been yeah uploading some videos as well. Oops, <laughs> sorry. One thing, one thing, really, really, really important. I. Hello. 
Yeah, it's very important. I had a slide here. I had a slide here. I had a slide here and I completely forgot about it. So the video is on the Instagram and also YouTube. Uh, Instagram is a little short version. The YouTube one is the full version. But um, the Instagram, the reason I keep uh, uploading a lot of videos recently, like reels, is that I have a workshop in California and um, they are having a little difficult time to advertise it because the Wada Sensei is in England and there was a little <clears throat> unfortunate things for the uh, staff people so it's kind of a little bit slow over there so I am going to have the workshop in Berkeley, California July 23rd and 25th July 26th is for the somebody who actually took my class already including the online class or the workshop in New York before so it will be probably if you're the first time not not probably if you are the well, if you are new here if you are new with me uh, please try to get this seat on either July 23rd or July 25th July 24th Sunday I will have the we will have the trunk show it's not only me it's gonna be many people there and I will be there probably chit chatting so you probably can come I gotta make sure that you can come as well but yeah so that's the workshop and I would like to make sure that it's, it's a really important announcement I completely forgot about it um, I will talk about the difference between the my own my Sashiko core class core and essence and application practice many misunderstand that the core and essence as the basic and application and practice as the advanced it's not like that it's more like core and essence is the most important workshop and application practice is more like sharing the recipe core and essence is more like teaching you how to write a specific bicycle uh, application and practice the workshop to take you to the bike park with the technique I share in the first one so uh, regardless of the Sashiko experience even if the one has 30 or 40 years of experience I ask them to take the core and essence uh, just in case that they know how to ride a bicycle in the bike park application practice I will not talk about how to ride a bike because I assume that everybody knows the basic um, sort of like they don't have to be able to do it but I want them to know what is the core and essence so that's how we distinguish between two workshops and it does not really go off once I once you take the workshop it's not gonna it's, it's like the, again riding a bicycle once you get it it's not gonna be gone uh, I will help you to of course rem refresh your memory as well but anyway that's the workshop uh, Thank you for the organizer. New York work workshop is already full for the core and essence. There's a little space for the application practice, so you can actually take the online class before the July 10th and then come to the application practice. So let's let's see. Um, if there's anything I can do, please let me know. I will be available over the email, comments, which I do not really reply on the YouTube, but if that comment requires replies, I will make that reply as well. All right, so let's move back to the stitching. Phew, that was a very important announcement. Sorry about that. Thank you, Helen, for reminding me that there was a reason that I kept <laughs> uploading a lot of videos on the Instagram. So what was I talking? What was I talking? The borrow. Yeah, so the Japanese, I have never met anybody who asked me to specifically define what sashiko and boro is because we live in a society or even understanding that there is not we do we, we don't value the definition that much of course the definition and answers are really important but we really do not value that as much as we do in english so by condensing all of my message about borrow into four minutes of 10 slides, uh, there are a lot of information filtered. And it's not my ideal way to do it. I, this is the ideal way, by the way. Uh, sharing the stories over the internet like this while stitching is the ideal way to share what Sashiko, what borrow is. 
but unfortunately it's not gonna happen in many cases and it's already too late too late to sort of wait for them to understand the Japanese way to share the culture so I have to jump into the American or Western value system to deliver the message and the more the people get interested the more they will come to the live streaming and listen to this so yes I believe that I could condense the important message about Boro in that four minutes but at the same time that's only one person or even less than one percent of the whole message whole stories I would like to share so please keep listening please the patreon is one place I share all of the informations as well which is not really uh, active yet I wish I can have more time but there are 150 articles about Sashiko and Boro and that's more like the better place for you to have concrete understanding of what I'm trying to do <clears throat> but yeah so another reason that we do not like we do not value the definition so much is that Sashiko and Boro are not something extraordinary for us it is unbelievably ordinary for Japanese people so they don't really know what it is uh, some of them remember what they did in the school kids childhood but they did not know they don't know if it's called sashiko or boro so because it's very 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 ordinary we do not really we did not have a chance to define what it is and because we have not defined sashiko or boro for a long time there are so many variations of definitions and each each definition has stories and each definition, each stories has to be um, respected or preserved for that matter. As a result, it becomes super difficult to introduce one sashiko or one boro as the answer or whole picture of the culture. Um, because of this ordinary, ordinariness, ordinary, um, we tend to forget the roots. Uh, for example, like, there are many traditional established Japanese cu cultural craft. Um, in those cases, they have the family, the family, right? Uh, for example, in the kabuki performing art, there are several families who systematically in the structure to pro protect the culture tradition of kabuki. Uh, my family, my you know, my parents and my great great ah, my grandmother tried to make our family into the the family in Sashiko, but I disagreed because Sashiko is very much in the ordinary and I we shouldn't I I did not agree with that. So as the result, there are so many roots at the same time as people kind of put less value on the root if it is protected by the tradition or protected by those families then we really do not have to worry about the root because they will help they will try to protect that roots on our behalf like a gatekeeper for the culture but because it is so ordinary practice it is quite important, especially in today's society where anybody can say anything about anything as the master, we have to make sure that where it is from. And that's the very important part of understanding the culture, finding the root. Um, for that, I really do not trust the word I taught myself. Uh, anybody can teach themselves. Anybody can teach themselves. Sashiko, um, I taught a lot of things to myself as well, but I watched something before I taught. Like, in order to teach something to myself, you have to watch or read something. I don't think I've created anything new by myself. If I need to fix the floor, I watch the YouTube videos from a specific channel. So, in today's era unless they are not 
living unless they live in the far far from the internet and never use the social media we watch something we put something in our eyes so i do not really trust the concept of i learn everything by myself i taught it myself so they do have some of the source that they learned from that's that's what i really care i'm not really saying that they have to stop doing it because that's the bleaching the intellectual properties i am not asking to do that i'm not asking to give up anything i just want to make sure that the roots are also protected by saying that i learned this from this and it does not have to be you know some structured system it can be just i learned sashiko by watching as she's stitching on the live streaming that's good enough because i can provide a source as well if they come to me like you know i met lily and she said that she learned sashiko from atsushi's live streaming uh, she has not taken my workshop but she learned a lot from the live streaming then they might come to me to learn more or even the workshop itself in that case i can share the root i can share where it comes from where it came from and that at least i can protect the sashiko i have received but by somebody saying that i taught it myself regardless either japanese or non-japanese by saying that they are ignoring everybody be before them i taught it myself is kind of the last statement to kind of shut us up we have to be quiet okay you taught yourself then that's it and that's probably going to be more valuable because it emphasize on the originality but there's no such a thing as original in this like you know this as long as we're on the internet the original is a very very tricky and dangerous word to use because we look at something every single day subconsciously or consciously and make sure that when you learn such a from somebody else and i want you to learn such a from somebody else as well i want them to I want you to make sure that you know who you learn who you are learning from and it might be a good idea to ask who they learned from and if they say they taught it yourself they, themselves um that's a little bit of dangerous sign i mean they can probably list the if they can list the videos they watched and learned from that that's fine that's that's not something i'm you know talking about it right now here but it, it's very important to protect the roots. That's what I tried to convey in this post, in this live streaming. Because without the root, we cannot grow. As much as I hate it, I really hated my roots. I do have a root, and which I really hated, by the way. But, you know, regardless, I do have it. And that's what I'm trying to do based on. So that's the importance of the ordinary if if you have anything ordinary around you like let's say let's say that how to cut the vegetable in your way or how to make tomato sauce anything like something very ordinary but you kind of do it without any intention like without any hustle you something if you can do something that or, the root of ordinary can be sometimes very important so because you are the one who has to protect that when it comes to the danger of losing it like right now for me sashiko 10 years ago i did not have to do it because nobody like not 10 years 20 years ago i didn't have to do it because it was nobody was touching it to be to make it something different now unfortunately there are a movement that be, it's becoming something else so I have to sort of stand up for that. Oh, sorry, Lily. Uh, it reminds me of an episode of Star Trek where some aliens speak entirely using cryptic and layered references to their history and le legend. These words do not have hard definitions because they are shortened for vast cultural knowledge. Yeah, we might be like alien. I sometimes feel that Japanese are 
sort of aliens for that if the communication if this dial that dialect not a dialect that direct communication based on the definition and also uh, sort of the dualism is the way to communicate right now and to be successful i think the japanese culture is extremely alien <laughs> and that's why some people really really like Jap japan or japanese culture uh, they find it very unique because it's really pretty much outside of their complete understanding vice versa though <laughs> for me it was very much different culture when i come came here so Oh, don't don't like don't worry about aliens. You know, alien something from space. I I, I did not take it as the. I did not take it as negative word at all, and I think it's quite true. It's that unique. If it's that unique, by the way, um, my status is resident alien in the United States right now. I got a green card. So I am sort of the immigrant, not a sort of, I am the immigrant. And until I get a citizenship, which I can in a few years if I want to, my status is resident alien. So alien is actually a word that I got used to. So I'm the alien. My wife is also alien. And my mother is the alien in my culture she is from space i really don't understand her i'm happy to have met you and depend that my knowledge about sashiko developed probably developed my knowledge about sashiko and you are my interesting friend <laughs> interesting another word interesting interesting friend thank you i used to make a joke about those like i used to i i went through pretty much all of the visa here i went to the f1 which is a student visa and opt as the training practicum visa and then h1 then i went back to japan and then h4 as the spouse visa of the h1 and until i get a green card those all of the um visas are not even alien they are just sort of non-immigrant, so they're not supposed to be immigrating. They are just here for the temporarily. God, it took so much time and years of getting that status. You know, if you're born in the United States, you probably don't know any of those things. And that's that's great. You shouldn't know about those things. But that's one big I don't want to say privilege, privilege, but that's one thing that you don't have to worry about if you're an American citizen, which comes to me as a Japanese as a privilege. If I live in Japan, I am very much privileged because I don't have to worry about my citizenship and I get all the benefit as a Japanese if I were in Japan right now. So, you know, we cannot choose which country we live we we can choose which country we live, but we cannot choose which country we are gonna be born in. So it's very interesting, but yeah, we gotta go through those things. It just happened. I have no complaints. Uh, as much as I kind of sounded like I'm complaining. I have no complaints about those immigration system. It has to be like that. And I'm glad that I went through the... I'm not a glad. I am glad and I'm happy with myself that I went through those process as standard as we can. So... I mean, we can't, not to extent, it depends, like, I cannot choose which country to live in because I'm disabled and other countries will not let me move there. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. So we, you know, we all have a situation, environment, conditions, and... 
there's a one person who I kind of keep blocking. She is a bit... Mm, how do I put it? <laughs> she is a bit difficult. She has been a difficult person for me the last three years. Anyway, she hates the word privilege. <laughs> Whenever I say privilege, she starts jumping onto the topic as if I am saying that she's the bad person. So I kind of stopped interacting after so many years of trying. But my point is that privilege itself is not the bad thing or even good thing. It's not a good or bad, it's just what it is. Um, if we are privileged right now, then we are privileged. We cannot change that, and it's not good or bad. One thing we have to be careful is, though, is that we have to acknowledge it. Acknowledge that I am privileged. Therefore, we have to acknowledge the difference. That's it. I mean, some people might say that because we are privileged, we have to make sure to balance the system I do not 100% agree with that because we are all different. We are all different. So, you know, social balancing, some people should get more chance than the others privilege. Those are too difficult for me to talk about right now. Even I'm still learning. So I don't know about it. I'm not well educated enough to talk about it. But... It is important to acknowledge it. We cannot, we should not really ignore the fact which apply to Sashiko as well. Uh, the worst case scenario is happening right, right now because the, those privileged people are the one who is trying to damage the culture which exists outside of their categories. So that's the another reason I'm here. We live in such a complicated world, but the reality is not that complicated. It's not that difficult. I mean, do I ask to <laughs> give me more or something if you're privileged? No, I don't do that. We are all the same. Well, that category. And I'm too new to this culture mindset to talk about for the balancing. But <laughs> I can talk about Sashiko. And as of now, unfortunately, it is becoming something completely different. Like, <laughs> I, I made a post on Instagram saying that such, I mean, borrow, the word borrow has both positive and negative stories. And I received quite many feedbacks that I they did not know the negative part of borrow. And that is incredible. That is kind of scary, surprisingly astonishing change this English society made. Um... Before 1990, let's say 1990, 30 years ago, um, the word borrow has almost zero positive meaning. I don't think there were people who used borrow as the positive meaning. Uh, those encyclopedia, P en Japanese encyclopedia has the borrow as the meaning. There's three categories of borrow. Uh, none of those three categories have the positive meaning. It's all negative. So the positive meaning of borrow is very recent change. Uh, it may be done by Japanese people for the fashion trend. At the same time, those who do not read Japanese, who do not understand Japanese culture, just jumping onto that trend and interpreting borrow as the beautiful story, which I don't know who created. As the result, borrow is now the positive word, and people get surprised by learning that the borrow has the both positive and negative stories. 
So, <laughs> you know that borrow means horse shit, right? Horse shit. Like I told, I mean, I didn't say shit, I'm sorry. Oops. Oopsie. <laughs> um, a few, a few weeks ago, I introduced that the borrow means the horse feces. So I am now on the project of making the t making a t-shirt saying borrow happens as shit happens. Like borrow happens. And one of the replies that I received from on the Instagram is that I mean she did not have really you know, she did not have any intention or any like she was very innocent. She I don't know if she she anyway, the comment was very innocent. She was asking like why is it insulting to use borrow on somebody else well that's because of that like if if you <laughs> if some foreigners came to your town and if somebody called like let's say you are really extremely financially challenging and you cannot get a nice jacket or you cannot get a nice shirt so you are wearing something 10 years old 20 years old with a lot of you know, dirt and wearing wear and tour. Uh, the foreigner came to your town with a lot of money saying that, oh my god, your shirt looks like shit. And <laughs> so it's not insulting? I don't think it's insulting. I mean, there is no mutual understanding that Boro became the art. So by saying that <laughs> your borrow looks beautiful is quite insulting if they know or even basic understanding of Japanese word. But probably from now on, if the Japan opens its country and if the borrow becomes more popular like this pace, there might be somebody like that. And they don't show, they don't, those people who think the borrow is the offensive word they don't show their emotions that easily so they'll just smile well they probably don't understand english for that matter it one has to one has a responsibility to teach them teach japanese one foreigner that foreigner has a responsibility to teach japanese why they think they borrows are so you know beautiful by then, probably the lady will not take it as the insulting word, but it comes with the responsibility, and that responsibility has to require the ability to talk in Japanese. And those who can understand Japanese as a language, they will not probably say those things because they will come up to some, some of the reading that borrow is not really the positive word. So it is very, very, very interesting, and please don't use borrow in. Like you can use those things in the community where everybody, you think everybody knows about borrow as the new trend, but don't go to the you know rural place, and you know they might be actually wearing something like borrow. I don't think they are. If the, if you like. If you are in Tokyo and in a fancy restaurant and if the lady is wearing something like a borrow jacket, of course you can assume that she is using the borrow as the art or art perspective. So in that case, of course, you can not of course, of course in that case you can try to complement that jacket because she may be, you know, doing it on purpose. But if you think that they're not doing it on purpose, be careful. So, be careful. Just a second. Uh, Lily's, Lily's message got uh, sort of banned. Okay, this is unrelated, but it reminds me of how when hearing people are being us. <laughs> okay, that's why. Sorry, the, some of the word is going to be filtered. Uh, AS, I, I'll sometime, sometimes smile and sign. <laughs> That, that's what we do. I mean, I'm sorry to say it, but if that's what we job like 
that's probably what my parents are doing too. My, my parents in law, I don't understand Russian and Hebrew, so I don't know what they're talking about me. They might be saying like, wow, my daughter married to a kindergarten kids because he doesn't drink much, which means I used to drink a lot, but a lot. Definition a lot between me and them are very different, so. That's what language is scary about. That's that's how language is, you know, the people who knows the sign language is has their own. <laughs> well, but that's something I would like to learn. If there's a word that I wait, I can do that. that that's fantastic. <laughs> it's, it's just ignorance. It's just an unfortunate ignorance. They think that their world is everything, and you know, I I don't have any disability. I can listen, I, I can hear, I can look, I can see, I can taste, I can sense. So I don't really understand the difficulty of those with a dis disability. At the same time, because I was a foreigner in us for a long time i know how difficult to be minority uh, sometimes the majority like let's say that you know with lily's example um with there's a big gap between the people who has hearing problem and without the hearing problem and we kind of i'm sorry if it's I don't think it's offensive, but I'm sorry if it became offensive. Uh, in this world, we think that the being able to hear, being able to understand what the this, this sound is saying verbally is normal, what they consider as the normal. And that's already wrong. There's no such a thing as normal, it's just different. So it's very important to try to understand each phase, but one when one decided to force our normal to the others, then things are still uh, getting painful, getting dangerous, getting painful, and that's what's happening in Sashiko, and that's million. That's the same thing happened in million of cases in different situation. So we have to be careful for that. For the record, in ASL, the word S is the say OK hand signal. Oh, that's good to know. That is something to know. So, yeah. I hope, I hope those, you know, those who teach about Boro at least knows this story. I probably shared this information so many times, but none of my artisans, I had a, almost 60 artisans in my memories, but none of them liked the word borrow. None. Even they took it as insulting. That's why I'm kind of putting a lot of emphasis on this very much because I know how hate, how, how much they hate that word. Like, let's say that you came to my store 30 years ago, and if you asked if we have a borrow jacket, they will be very much pissed. And they will probably be upset to me because I'm the one who's translating it. But <laughs> that's how bad it was. We had a pride. Uh, we had a pride to not to make borrow. We possibly accept those orders but it has to have enough stories we like let's say like please make borrow is one of the it's really insulting for that actually like you know it's feces can you make a delicious meal with this fishes to the actual chef although that feces might taste good that's just 
insulting. It was insulting, and I did not like the word borrow until very recently. I don't know if I like it still. I find the borrow beautiful, but if I like it or not, mm. Like, we do sashiko so that we don't have to make borrow. So it's really... This trend is very... Not a wrong, but superficial. <laughs> so if somebody is using the word borrow like as if they know everything, please laugh. You don't have to point it out because then they will get upset. They will start fighting back and they will start attacking you. Those people attack because they think they know everything. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> Sometimes this world can be so strange and there's you may be surprised, but there's so many non Japanese people who try to teach me what Sashiko is. Uh it's not a joke. It's not a joke and I have some screenshot. They try to point me out that my Sashiko is wrong. Sure. So why are you talking to me in English right now. I mean, sure. If somebody said that if my job my sashiko is wrong in Japanese, I have. I will open up my discussion, but in my thirty nine thirty eight years of experience, nobody has done that. Nobody. We because we accept the differences. They might think that our sashiko is different, but they never say that's wrong because that's how sashiko was perceived. Not a perceived, preserved. Now, after sashiko becoming so popular in the Western culture, some people are trying to teach me that it's my sashiko is wrong. Sure, sure, let's try to not do that. It's okay to have complicated feeling about it, meanings of word shift, especially with cross-cultural situations, so you can still hold the view of borrow from each lens, I think. I am trying. I'm trying my best. It is beautiful when we think about the stories, and it is actually beautiful too. But those stories can open up our eyes to accept it as a beauty, but also it emphasizes the some psychological, you know, damage. The example I often use is that you don't want to drink a soup from toilet bowl, no matter how clean it is. You just don't want to do that. The same as that, I don't want to eat anything on my bowl pieces. I don't want to eat anything on my board pieces. I think anyone who lives through a shift where they knew the old version personally has a complicated feeling about it. Yeah. Just look at old writing talking about the development of anything more than ever. So change is good. I am not saying that change is bad. So borrow might be completely great word in the future. I don't know if how it's gonna be, but that change has to bring everybody, as many people as possible on the same field. So filtering or cutting, ignoring those inconvenient voices to make one more profitable convenience, then that's the issue. Yeah? That then what then that's the time issues start having occurring. So yeah, let's see. <laughs> let's see how this is gonna go. Some people say it's too late. Mm, I agree with them. I agree with that. It's too late. But it's not too late to speak up unless as long as I know the pain. I as long as I expect the pain, I will go through. It's not too late. It is too late to share what Sashikon Boro is without pain. Because it's already done. We have to fight it back. Many, like I have to say, the Boro is not a positive word. Where everybody thinks that it's a positive word, of course there will be some, you know, struggles there. So I have to probably go through the pain. 
but that doesn't mean that it's too late to do it. So let's see. Let's see what I can do. I mean, that's what I'm doing here. The more you listen to this live streaming, the more information you know, the more you can talk about it to your friends. And one day, I hope, the general understanding of Sashiko Nuboro will be somewhat different from now. Little by little. The great part of this is that I will not stop doing it. Meanwhile, those people who are now making new Sashiko will probably leave. They will not continue. Uh, they will not do the same thing when they, when it's when it's stop making money or att attra attention, drawing attention. They will move on to something else. So it won't be. As long as I keep doing it, it's gonna be... I hope it's... <laughs> I don't know if I can do it in my lifetime, but at the same time, again, like this YouTube is fantastic. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, those social media and website is very good because those are all archives. It is important... Not important, it's essential to have those voices. The biggest difficulties right now is that we do not have those voices from our grandma's age or grand great grand great 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 parents' age. I might be the last one who received those messages, so but everything is in my memory, right? It's not a record. It's not a record. It's a memory. It's in memory. Now, by me talking like this, it's gonna be the record. I hope that future Japanese or future anybody actually, for that matter, future. Next generation who can, who are interested in Sashiko and Boro, listen to this and still trying to understand how the change happened. So we can protect the root of the original practice we have been doing. Not original, ordinary practice, I'm sorry. Then we can protect the roots of ordinary practice we have been doing. Phew. <laughs> this is something, but I probably I have never met somebody who used this thimble in my way in my life besides my family. There are many people who use the thimble, but I don't know. In fact, this is not the way my family was spreading. Like this is not the orthodox way to do it. It's here. My my family, my mother actually used the thimble here. The middle finger thimble here is more like the way I established because I could not do it well. My hands are a little, it's not that big in comparison to the uh, other Western people, but it was bigger than the other people in my family. So I tried to adjust everything and I came to the conclusion that by doing this th middle finger symbol, regardless of the size of the hands and movement, anybody can do the running stitch. So, so they say that they use the middle fingers. They they say that they use the middle. They say that they use the thimble on the middle finger, but I have not met anybody or have not watched any videos introducing this thimble before 2010 or 2005. There's so many videos right now because they have they may have copied me or you know there's so many videos with this one but before two th even 2015 probably if you know anybody who is doing that who was doing that in 2015 before 2015 which is is the year that I started sharing this how to use thimble online. <clears throat> Let me know. There was a very, not a famous, there was a one popular Japanese person. I think her name is Miho san. Takeuchi san da kana? Miho san. She has a website for Sashiko and she had that 
when I was in Japan, so quite long time ago. I don't think she has the social media or website right now, but she is the one who I know who introduced Sashiko in English and Japanese. I don't know if she's, you know, native Japanese, but I think she's native Japanese. Um, but I think she's from the Wasai field, the kimono making, so her running stitch was beautiful, but not the same way as I was doing. So it's really, it's too orderly to make it like a technique. After it becomes the trend, there are many people who are teaching it as a technique. But, well, well, well. Sorry, the, today's live streaming became a little bit of kvetching, complaining a lot, so. God, it's already 50 minutes. <laughs> One of your animal, how many animals do you have? Yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't know what I want to do though, that's, that's really, sometimes I wonder what I want to do, I never expected me to be like who I am today, I decided that I will live with Sashiko, but I never expected that I would be talking or even I would be reading about those issues and sharing my own feeling about it. At the same time, if somebody gotta do this, it's probably me. Because those who has many years of experience in Sashiko in Japan do not speak in English. And those who can speak English from Japanese people unfortunately don't have that many years of experience. They probably still doing Sashiko after Sashiko became the trend. So like let's say five years top. Probably not more than ten years. And it, it's not really the about of it's not really I'm not talking about how important it is to have many years of experience. The years of experience is not that much not that important. The, what is important is when they are learning Sashiko. Is it before it was transformed to something new or it's before it, it was very ordinary or something? <laughs> there was the age that there were so many monsters in Sashiko which some of my Japanese friends refrain that <laughs> There were many, many strict teachers in Japan about Sashiko, and we call them monsters. Not we, I call them monsters. It's so scary. Monster with much respect, so don't get me wrong. Monster as somebody extraordinary. <laughs> so, and they, be, they got old, they got softer, they get, you know, quiet because now internet is more. Internet is like an amplifier, so I can make my voice louder. They don't have that. So, but 20 years, 30 years ago, 1980s, 1980s, 1990s. <sighs> Let's go back, 1980s. 1980s probably is the when the Japan was experiencing the extremely steep economic growth some people spend their entire life in sashiko in that age where everybody was making tons of money by doing almost nothing i don't want to say nothing but you know that age some people are doing sashiko you know how unique they are right Ay, ay, ay. See, that's why I have to make probably book, but it's coming little by little. 
it's not coming from any publishers, but I am working on it little by little, so little by little. Okay, it's been 55 minutes. I appreciate your time here. But since I'm not 100% in my condition, I would like to stop a little bit earlier than usual, which is about one hour, like about now. If there's any request for me to talk about, please let me know. I don't mind going a little bit over. It seems apparent that they pushed you to develop your mastery in the way they were taught. Sorry, it seems apparent that they pushed me to develop... Mm, they pushed me to develop my mastery in the way they... Mm, it's one of the big misunderstandings. I keep saying that I was born in the Sashiko family and I had a lot of teachers, but nobody taught me. <laughs> nobody taught me. And that's what Japanese craftsmanship. If somebody is teaching, that's not already Japanese craftsmanship. No, nobody teach. Like, I teach Sashiko in this six hours workshop. That's not a Japanese way to teach. You gotta be in one space with me for six years at least. And I ask you to do everything, like, you know, cleaning the toilet, unrelated to Sashiko. And then one can watch me stitching. And then that's the learning. Learning. So, I don't think my... They... They, they did not push me out. They just... I don't know, I don't know what it is, but they laughed a lot, they teased, they made fun of me a lot, and I have to stand up to get it back. That's a really good point, I have to think about that, what is that? They did not push me out, but that's something expected, like the, the there's no except there's no case that I do not try to develop my own because that means the end of everything. Like if they, they don't teach me anything, right? I have to learn by looking at it. And meanwhile they criticize how bad I am. And I cannot do it because my hands might be wrong. So I have to try to try an error to see what's going on. Do I did I have a choice to give up? Probably not. If I, gave, if I gave up, I would have probably categorized as the failure. Very, well, I was failure back then already. But more failure, stronger failure. And then probably I wouldn't... We have a lot of weird cultures, so... So yeah, that, that's like very much the Japanese craftsmanship is quite like that. I mean, it's not like this right now today because it's very, un it's very inefficient. But 30 years ago, it was like that. You have to be, like in order to be a sushi chef, you have to start cleaning the um, sushi restaurant first. There's no such a thing as sushi school. There were no such a thing as sushi school in Japan. Right now, there are such a thing. and. Many people, you know, try to be as efficient possible. So what I teach is not something I received as the teaching material. There's no textbook I received. There's no patterns that I, you know, everything is based on my 30 years of experience. And I kind of make it condensed that it will, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult once you get it, but it took... It can take a long time to get it. Yeah, kitchen culture is one thing too. It's, it's like a, it, well, it's the same everywhere. It was like that everywhere in Japan back then. 
in the craftsmanship when they say the master like when we kind of talk about the mastery like the like artisanship mastery ship i don't think there was any teaching package of course of course of course the master or the teacher is responsible for the apprentice's life so they have to feed but that's it feed or place to stay everything else was outside of their interest so the biggest difference today and back then is that back then they had to decide one thing for their life at the early age of their life so if i had to if i chose sashiko for my life that was it it so i had a let's say 90 years or even like at least 50 or 60 years to spend to learn that so the first few years of doing something unrelated was okay because i knew that i would have spent more than 50 years in that today we are expected to learn continuously and there's no such a thing as you'll be fine by doing one thing right like i don't even know if i'm doing this one few years from now i might be the plumber i might be the i might be working in the construction site we don't know because that's how world is expecting the labor to be but back then the Jap japanese ha japanese culture society had enough resources and good structure to support those craftsmanship that's why it could exist now i don't think it can exist because japan became more like westernized and that's sad but sometimes that's probably good for some craftsmen but master like one of the things like people call me sometimes master and i feel very 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 uncomfortable when somebody called me that because when one say one admit if i say that i'm the master that's the end of the master <laughs> the f master who said that i'm the master is not already master because master has to know that the master is not enough huh? but there's so many masters like if if somebody if you know somebody who introduced themselves as the japanese master be really careful that's there's no such a thing as japanese master because master will never call themselves master in my understanding <laughs> i mean they can be called master from the other people i don't know any masters who call themselves as masters by themselves like at least they don't introduce themselves like that that's not a title that's more like the name from given name and i know it's you know it's messed up culture it's not about good it's not i'm not talking about good or bad it's just the difference and how difficult this culture it is to translate and again unfortunately it's not well done now Once I was kind of when I started saying when I started saying that such cool introduced in English is not wrong but insufficient, I received a comment saying that you I should respect those who tried who introduced Sashiko in English a long time ago before I did. And yes, I do respect those people, but it does not mean that they did everything right they did not share they filtered information oh, i hope it's not a intentional but even if it's not intentional that itself is not good enough so respect is good but my question would be like why didn't they learn japanese then until somebody japanese like me started questioning so it is not wrong please don't get me wrong it's not wrong whatever you know about sashiko and boro in english is not wrong unless well i, I believe that they're not wrong unless there are people that i don't know yet
But that's not a sufficient. That's not really enough. You're only looking at one perspective, that one aspect of the culture, which is quite insufficient. Like borrow as being positive word, sashiko being the pattern name. Those are two simplified word explanation for that. All right, uh, I will stop doing this after this much thread. So if you're watching this in the archive, please let me please leave the comments so I can answer the questions in the next live streaming. Uh, do if you have any questions right now, please let me do so. Please let me know. A lot of people, when they say something should be respected, they mean that it should be unrespect, unquestioned, and any critic is disrespected. Yeah, that's that's how I understood. That's probably how I understood. Yes, thank you for um, articulating that. Yes. It's all, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but it's all white people, so those who say that you should respect that is those white people. But at the same time, it's, like I said, the white people, I did not mean to specify that, I kind of, my mouth slipped, I'm sorry, but, you know, Many audience on this YouTube live is probably white people, and please acknowledge that you are the one who can change too. Those like the white people, like in Sashiko, like specifically, like limited to Sashiko, uh, majority of the people who are trying to repaint these cultures are white people, not not well some Japanese, but mainly not every, mainly white people. So do I? dislike those white people no 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 those are the people the people who can change this trend is not japanese i cannot change it i don't think i can nobody can but the people who are in the same category so i really appreciate you coming here and then trying to speak for us to us share your ideas so It's where we use the power we have, and I hope that, well, I don't hope, I am sure that you will use it for the right, di not even right direction, to fulfill the missing part. I hope it makes sense. I hope it makes sense. I cannot change it, everything. By my, I cannot do it by myself. I was, I am the one who is speaking about, I, I am the one who is speaking up, but I am not the one who changed this trend. I cannot change this trend, even if I want to. Because the majorities are in English, and not many Japanese are joining this. And those who can speak English are fairly younger generation, and they don't really probably care about what it is. They care how it is in the Western culture more than how it was in Japanese culture. So it is you. Bibi-san, arigatou gozaimasu. I had a good time. Thank you. I hope you feel better. Oh, oopsie. I don't like this pattern, so just just give me take some time to finish it. Oh, um, sorry. As always, it would be very much helpful if you could press the like button. Um, I would like to keep my YouTube channel as healthy as possible, and those uh, good button will keep our channel healthy. Um, it's still like I'm so surprised. Like every week, I say that I still have one or two trolls. That every time I have a video, they 
put the negative, which is very hard work. I wouldn't be able to do that because, like, every, like faster than anybody. Probably faster than anybody here because that's so. I some is it probably Robert? It may be Robert because otherwise they have to be in front of the computer all the time. So. Do you exercise your hands and finger before and after sewing? No, this is actually, this running stitch is actually a exercise. No, I, I, you know, I stitch, I can stitch 24 hours if I want to, and I have done that already on this YouTube. So I really don't need the after or before exercise. I think they are the bots. Okay, that that's that probably makes sense. That's probably makes sense. So they are the bots. In that case, I don't have to worry about it. But your good mark is you're not a good mark. Your good sign would be very much appreciated. It's annoying then. <laughs> Bot is worse than actual people then. Like, if it's person, the person has to love me more than anything, <laughs> right? So, I was having a little more hope. Okay. I, I have to stretch my hands and arm when stitching myself. I have arthritis and a while ago I started having symptoms of carpal tunnel. This and I hope I had a good time. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll see you tonight. Mm, if you are if you're doing sashiko if you're doing sashiko and if you need exercise before and after actual sashiko stitching, um it may be a good idea to take my workshop. I teach If there's any pain by Sashiko, that something is wrong. So please try to. Well, if you if you can afford, if you have enough surplus, I don't want to go through some you know challenges, but I probably can offer something helpful for that, which I wish I could share right now. But it's kind of difficult to. Do it without checking your hands too so but yeah usually there's no uh exercise required before or after i mean of course you can do like this if you want to but that's that's not really <laughs> exercise i guess anyway um thank you so much for coming uh what what so yes i do have a workshop in july next month uh, the new york the workshop in new york is sold out it's booked fully booked but i believe that she opened up the wait list so you can try you know it's 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 a uh, it's a den not a dangerous it's a difficult time to be healthy for that matter so there might be some opening if you're on the waiting list uh, there are some spaces in the california berkeley session i believe they are so please Sorry, get the link from this description, and I hope I can meet you there. I can see you there. Sorry, and I hope you had a good time today, and I hope you will have a good weekend as well. All right, thank you so much for coming, and have a good night. Bye bye.